Welcome to the Supernatural Phantom Track here at Continual. I'm your host, Gail Z. Martin, and tonight we are talking about the prequel, The Winchesters. But before we uh, get into the details, let's let all of our wonderful panelists introduce themselves, starting with Carol Malcolm. Hi, I'm Carol Malcolm, the director of the Urban Fantasy Track at DragonCon, and we do cover uh, Supernatural and we'll be covering The Winchester. So, I have been enjoying it and very much appreciate the chance to be on this panel. Thank you. All right, Sue. Hi, I'm Sue Phillips. I'm the director of the science fiction literature track at Dragon Con. I've been a Supernatural fan since day one. So, um, and I like the Winchesters a great deal. Um, appreciate being added to this panel. Awesome, Janet. Hi, I'm Janet Walden West, and I write urban fantasy and paranormal romance, and both are full of monsters and monster hunters. Very good. Electra. I'm Electra Hammond. I'm a writer and an editor, and I too was from in on Supernatural since the very beginning, and in on the Winchesters from the very beginning, and following them both with great joy. Very good. Samiko. Oh, hi, my name is Samiko. Um, I'm an award-winning um, author of horror and uh, Afro-surrealism, and I definitely do write uh, paranormal romance and supernatural stuff. And also, I love Supernatural, and I have been watching The Winchesters, and I'm enjoying that also. Thank you. Very good. Marks? Yeah, hey, I'm Marks Pyle. I'm a filmmaker, co-host of the podcast, Sean Entertainment, uh, also um, an author uh, writing monster hunters and, and about monsters and uh, i've been a fan ever since the very first episode of supernatural so of course i have to had to watch winchesters and i'm gail c martin and morgan bryce as gail i write epic and urban fantasy as morgan i write urban fantasy male male paranormal romance but all my modern worlds are ones sam and dean could walk into and feel right at home um i fell in love with the show halfway through season 11 binge watched 11 seasons in four months to be ready for the start of season 12 started down the rabbit hole and have just never come up for air ever since so it was just natural to watch the winchesters too and uh, enjoy it very much so what um what did you expect to see when the idea of the prequel came out uh before you had actually watched the show did you have any preconceptions about maybe what this was going to be like carol I think, you know, I think the show has kind of lived up to what I was expecting to see, but I think one thing that has taken me a little by surprise, but I like it a lot, is the fact that there's more of a, you know, of the whole Scooby gang group uh, <laughs> feeling that they have in here than I was expecting, mainly because we didn't see that in Supernatural, which I should have added. I. I'm also a day fan from day one um, for that show, but I, th I think that that's been something I wasn't expecting and have, you know, have very much enjoyed because, I mean, we had the feeling, we knew that there was this big hunter network, but we never got to see, you know, we just saw it, in, you know, every once in a while in, in individual episodes where they work with maybe one other person. You know, and so to see this, this group kind of coming together and gelling uh, as young people, um, you know, uh, that's been fun. And you can't beat the 70s setting. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> Sue, how about you? Um, I'm not sure I had any preconceptions when the show was first announced. I think I was kind of thinking it might be a little more John and Mary centric rather than, as uh, Carol said, the Scooby gang, <laughs> but uh, I'm enjoying it. I I like it a lot. I like the uh, members of the gang and, and they all add something to whatever they're hunting at the time. <laughs> okay, 
Janet? I think I was expecting something more with that latter part of supernatural feel, very gritty and angsty. And so far there has been plenty of action and heartfelt moments, but at the same time, it feels very young and fresh. So, I mean, it kind of sounds weird to say it, but it's its own show. They um, haven't gone down and traumatized yet. Give them credit. I was going to say, they're not jaded yet. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're, yeah. really. <laughs> they're Winchesters, it'll happen. Electra. <laughs> um, I, I had, I guess, gotten it into my head canon that this was going to be the part of the, their lifetime where Mary was stepping out and, and hunting and John didn't know about it yet. And I, I have loved the direction they've taken it in where they're both hunting and they've, they've found the Men of Letters stuff and the whole Scooby gang vibe. And this is way better than my head can it ever could have imagined <laughs> it. And the light feel and the fact that it's centered around what I, what I think is gonna be the core of the show is the love story of John and Mary and that that we got to see um so beautifully in in the episode lebanon of supernatural where we could tell just how much they loved each other through it all so i i love what they've done and i'm just holding holding it together that they will continue to let us see it okay Shemiko. Yeah, um, so um, I think that similar to Electra, I thought that this was going to be the part um, of Mary's life where, um, you know, she, yeah, I thought this was going to be more centered around Mary and probably Samuel Campbell, Indiana Campbell. So um, I thought it was going to be, um, you know, yeah, more about her and her family of hunters. And I didn't know that it was gonna be the Scooby gang thing either. Um, and, um, you know, I, but um, I will say that um, I really am enjoying the show. And one thing that I really appreciate is how much the, you know, the, the car is is a character in this and the oh, mixtapes yeah. that the, yes. the mixtapes like we're getting to see in the 70s where these songs came from on the mixtape so i find that really cool it was funny i saw um an interview with jensen and he was saying sometimes coming up with the music is hard because the song you think is perfect it's like dang it hadn't come out yet so <laughs> when it's, it was all you know, it was all in the past. If you're going back to 1972, some of these things haven't happened yet. <laughs> so, Mark, sorry. Yeah, I didn't know what really to expect at first. The trailer, of course, clued me in a little bit, right? Um, but uh, I thought maybe it would be a little bit grittier, but it is lighter. I do like the ensemble cast aspect. Apparently, everybody's, well, not everybody, some people online that I've looked or embracing the monster club nickname so <laughs> um and uh so i do and i like ensemble cast i think sometimes supernatural at, in later seasons could have benefited from it just so that they have people to kill off <laughs> but, <laughs> and i say that okay. i hope they don't kill off some of these characters but you know we know what i mean um uh so um i do like the dynamic uh, they bring a different energy to it and um and uh you know i'm, I'm curious to see where it goes yeah, okay. I, uh, can yeah, I say sure. one thing? Mm -hmm. I, I give them points for choosing, for casting a guy who looks as though he could be related to Sam. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yes. I, that, I mean, that really struck me. It didn't strike me as much the very first time I watched it. But it, a, after about the third episode, I was like, dang, he really does look as though he could, you know, could have been related to it. anyway. Okay. <laughs> and who turns out to be a big supernatural fan and basically like fanboyed all over Jensen when they first met because he was a huge fan of the original show. Uh, um, I, I love, uh, you know, I, I love Scooby Doo. I've loved Scooby Doo all my life. So, you know, I was like, cool, we've got the Scooby gang and they've even got the bus. Um, yeah, right. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> well, it, it clears up that one comment from early on 
where Dean has to talk his dad out of buying a VW bus. This is why he wanted that and why he promised Mary he would. And Dean talks him into buying the Impala. Mm -hmm. Now we know why. Now we yeah. know why. <laughs> uh, yeah, I love the different personalities. I love that the show has a much more diverse cast uh, than Supernatural did most of the time and that we are getting to see some uh, more about those cast members as we go on. And I, I hope we have the time to fully explore them. But I've had a lot of fun with the show. And I think they've given us a lot of Easter eggs to let us know that they haven't forgotten, as Jensen calls it, the mothership. Um, <laughs> they, they do still love Supernatural in their hearts. But they've, they've run with some of those little pieces, like Electra mentioned, and done some interesting things with them. Who in the cast are your favorites and why, Carol? Well, you know, I knew I, well, I figured this question would be asked and I was like, oh, of course I'll have to say Carlos. But then I thought, but then, but then it's Lata. And then, you know, maybe even Ada. I got a kick out of, it was one of the last episodes when, um, um, I can't remember, is it Millie? that is his mom's name, that is John's mom. And uh, when she comes in and she, she leaves the room where she's working with them, trying to decipher this code and she finds Ada and she said, well, how do you, you know, how do you stand it being around these kids all the time? And she said, well, I just let them think they're in charge. <laughs> <laughs> and I drink. Yeah, and I drink. I, you know, and I thought that was great. I think that that's a tribute to the show though that it that i you know even after just that many episodes that it that i want to choose different people you know at at different times uh and i and i think that both seeing the backgrounds of both of them uh you know kind of exploring those uh those people has has made them uh, more interesting but uh, if I, I, in other words, I can't really pick just one, but I, but I, I really do enjoy that whole group, uh, you know, dynamic. And I think the fact that, that they are being portrayed as, as large a part of the show as they are, and not John and Mary, um, that it, it gives, uh, you know, it, I think it gives the world and the story they're trying to build more more backbone to be honest i think that that way they can develop it later maybe in in the second half of the season we will see more of the development you know of that relationship but you know if they started that from the get-go and didn't build the characters i think it would have been you know more difficult so that's my roundabout way of saying I ha I can't really pick between those people. <laughs> okay. <laughs> How about you? Me? Uh -huh. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, I'm kind of with Carol on this. I have to say Carlos, though, because he's just so there. I mean, he's he's himself. He he contributes to the group, and but he's. They don't make a big thing out of his sexual, you know, orientation. And that hair. Oh my God. And the hair, hair. The hair. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and, but also, um, Latika, Latka? Uh -huh. Latka. Uh, Latka. Yeah. I, I love her, uh, pacifism, if I've got mm -hmm. the character right. Uh, even though she's out there helping them hunt monsters. So, uh, but I generally like the ensemble as a gestalt, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Okay. How about you, Janet? I have to agree that I like the entire cast. It has been so much fun. And the fact that they all have such well-rounded backstories really adds to it. And but like, who is my favorite? It just depends week to week. But I <laughs> do lean toward, you know, it's like, who's your favorite child this time? Well, let me let me tell you how well they're behaving or not. But I think Latka is my favorite right now. She has already had such a strong arc. She starts out really doubting herself and, you know, being afraid to go in the field. Mm -hmm. This is not her thing. She doesn't want to do this, but she's going to support her friends, especially Mary. 
And then by the end of this first half of the season, she has figured out her place. She is a hunter, but she is not a physical person. She is more the conscience of the group at this point. She stops them and has them kind of take a beat and think about what road do you really want to go down? What's going to separate us from the things that we hunt? If we behave, you know, this way, if we right. kill first and ask questions, never. Okay. Uh, I like her. Um, I'm going to put in another point of mention about the group. I think the group was almost built the same way that um, the CSI team seemed to be put together where they've got um, a lab tech and a couple of field agents, except they're all going out there together and it seems to work super well. Because in many ways, Lada reminds me of the, the, the lab tech that can figure out everything that they have on every one of those NCIS CSI team. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I'm, I'm gonna go with, with my favorite character although I am tempted to say the car, it is Carlos, because he always has um, a quote for every occasion. Right, yeah, and, that's true. And, and he's, he's a wise ass, except when he's smitten. And, <laughs> oh, that was hysterical. That yeah. was wonderful, I love that. And, and the actor is just unbelievably good at this. He, he has mesmerized me from the beginning and he makes such a great foil to the, like the core of watching John and Mary falling in love. Yeah, and while you're doing it, you get to watch, you know, Carlos's crush of the week. <laughs> Samiko? Yeah, it definitely is Carlos for me. Um, for one thing, they have him being really true to the 70s, but being a really modern character at the same time, which I think um, requires a lot of actually thought and, and work. Um, as someone who was born in 1968, um, I remember how, and as a person of color um, who was born in 1968, I remember how really multicultural television, multicultural, um, movies, it was all really actually pretty much part of the normal la landscape um, mm -hmm. in the, you know, mm -hmm. during my childhood. And um, so people forget that having queer people, having people of color, um, you know, present like that was part of the liberal culture. And then during the Reaganomics, Reagan 80s, things started to change. Um, so um, I think it's great the way that they're taking modern sensibilities and 70s sensibilities um, and putting them together. And I love his hair and he's hot. Um, <laughs> right. Can yeah. yeah, yeah. we all agree on Carlos's hair? Yes. That's right. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, like this, they have a few slow-mos with the hair and yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's a diagram that that maps Sam's hair by season. So, you know, we we are <laughs> this this fandom has it for hair. That's Mark? right. Um yeah, it's tie for me for with Carlos and Lata Lata. And uh I just like both what the energy they bring and the different skill sets they bring to it. Uh it just depends on what episode. I mean, even like they're all really great, right? At this point, because like even Millie, I was kind of like, oh, Millie's kind of cool in that last episode as she was kind of helping him out. And Ada had some good episodes, especially the one of her son. Yeah. I was mm -hmm. even like, hey, let's have a son join him. <laughs> he seems cool. <laughs> <laughs> so they're doing a good job of all the supporting characters. So, but uh, but those two are my top favorite right now. Yeah, I've been surprised how much I've liked all the characters. Um in some ways maybe Mary the least because she's been so sharp edged and hard wound but I think that's the point she's she's learning to let go of some of that and I think she's supposed to be like that and she's she's getting better um I do think that John plays the role Drake plays the role beautifully for John Winchester makes him very sympathetic and we get to see more of John's issues coming home from Vietnam and um, PTSD and, you know, his trauma that certainly played into what 
Sam and Dean experience. I was really intrigued to get to know Millie because that was always one of my questions with Henry's backstory in Supernatural was, okay, we know how much it screwed up uh, John that his father up and left as far as he knew and that, that he abandoned them, so to speak. But what did it do to Millie? And then how did that affect John's mm -hmm. childhood um, with Millie's reaction to John's absence? And we see that. And I'm really loving getting to see how they're portraying her, um, I think very, very strong, but very realistically. Um, and with Carlos, I, I love Lada, I love Carlos. Um, I really love Ada and I love the story with her son. And it kind of reminded me of the shapeshifter therapist episode in Supernatural where I would have loved to have seen more of that character. Um, but with Carlos, I love that they have done a very good job of not making him a stereotype. You know, he was in the Navy. It's not right. like he was turning his draft card, running to Canada, you know, like you might have expected from the guy who drives the minivan with the beads and has the hair and the weed. Um, you know, he, he was there. And so his views are based on he was there. And, and I love that they kind of threw that in. So it's not, he's not a caricature. He's got a lot of depth to him. And I thought that that episode where we saw more of his and John's dealing with things brought a lot of depth to the, the Winchesters and brought a lot of interesting points to, hmm, how does this relate to the mothership? Right, because that's something I think that is important to note, and I'm glad you brought that up, that, that it does give us a little bit of basis for John's background in terms of, you know, even if you know things in a general sense of maybe what he experienced as a younger man, because everybody likes to pick on his A-plus parenting skills and you know, <laughs> we all get aggravated at him and for, for good reason uh, in the mothership. Um, but but th I think they've done a good job of, of kind of showing us, well, you know, th this is something to consider about where, you know, where some of that may have come from. Okay. Well, we, we've also talked a lot about how John, you know, knew a lot about cars and, and passed it on to Dean. Well, now we learn where he learned about cars from his mother. Right, the right. Woman. That is so cool. That is so cool. And we get to see another Men of Letters bunker, even if it's smaller. Mm -hmm. You know, I could have just been very happy if they'd have road tripped all the other deserted Men of Letters bunkers. <laughs> Give them here. time. Yeah, that would be it great. Seems to be on, it seems to be on the list. It's so cool that they've brought the men of letters into it too. Oh, yeah, that was so cool. So here's an adventure in head canon. There are supernatural is nothing if not uh, <laughs> full of fan theories, and one of the one of the areas of question is well, this is Dean with the voiceover this is dean exploring what happened to john and mary where's sam and when is dean doing this jensen says all will be explained by episode 13 but there are <laughs> many different theories about why it's happening the way it's happening have you thought about this and what is your head canon on it carol I haven't thought about it from the perspective of when, it, you know, when is Dean supposed to be uh, narrating this, but I think you have mentioned many times in the panels that we've done, whether here or the one for uh, the urban fantasy track, that, that you feel that there was a, a time period, there was like five years in between you know, after after what happened to Chuck, and then you know the the last uh, the last episode or two of the show, um, when you know the finale, whatever, uh, and you know, so my guess, if I if I had to guess, I would say that it would probably be during that time, and it would have been kind, it would have made sense kind of in a way, because if they were done dealing with the biggest threat because let's face it what could be a bigger you know who can be a bigger foe than god you know um but uh, as far as where was sam 
you know, I don't know. I, to be honest, I think the dean has always had, uh, ha always demonstrated more interest in his parents and their backstory than Sam did. So, you know, for from that, if, you know, from that perspective, I think it makes sense. This is just some kind of, you know, if if we're supposed to believe that he's you know, writing in a journal and looking these things up and trying to discover how they how they meld the two. That kind of makes sense to me that it would be kind of a personal project rather than one that had to involve Sam. Okay. okay. Sue? I haven't really thought about it, but thinking about it now, I'm wondering if this is in the time period after John disappeared, but before Dean met back up with Sam in college. That's a good point. Uh, uh, because as you say, he's not, where is Sam? And <laughs> if Sam is off trying to lead his own life, then uh, we're not going to see much of it. Okay. And probably Dean isn't going to think much about him. So I'll go with that. <laughs> How about you, Janet? I am torn between whether... This is conversations that Dean had with Mary after she came back, you know, these occasional oh. mother son moments where they discuss things, you know, what about the rest of the family? Because like you said, I think Dean has always been more interested in their family's background. Mm -hmm. um, you know, just, just getting the other side of the story, you know, not his dad's or whether this is just Dean bored as heck in heaven. And <laughs> <laughs> You know, that's checking good, out, checking out <laughs> history from his point of view. So, okay, Electra. Yeah, I'm. I'm with with Janet. I think it's Dean bored as heck in heaven, checking out history and and maybe talking to some of the folks involved. And I think that when you, when you you hit that episode at some point, there there's got to be some sort of a mind wipe or or an alternate universe or something because. John didn't really go back to hunting or didn't know anything about hunting in, in our timeline until um, he talked to Missouri and she told him everything. So maybe he goes to Missouri and she brainwashes him or, or puts a psychic block on him or something, but they're gonna explain it somehow. And none of them seem to know about the mental letters. So there, there's going to be some sort of resolution, and that'll be awesome. Mm -hmm. Sumiko and friend. Um, so um, I also did think that um, it was um, Dean who was in heaven. This is Marla, my cat. Um, <laughs> so I do think it was Dean after he died. Um, however, um, since when they originally were talking about it, they said that this was going to be about Mary. Um, I also wonder if it might be the Mary that is in the later um, part of the Supernatural series that they got to know who came from a different timeline. So that has also crossed my mind. If maybe the reason things are different hmm. is because it's that timeline's Mary. Hmm. Good thought. Marks. Hmm. Yeah, I think... Well, except for that possibility, I think uh, <laughs> just to avoid a canon conflict, if, if there's a gap before the last episode, that would be a great spot for anything to happen and it wouldn't affect anything. Uh, otherwise, yeah, maybe in heaven and investigating. Who knows? It'd be really cool. Then I probably could do this because it'd be too complicated, <laughs> but it'd be really awesome if like this is like the Creta are coming back and that's what he's got to find out and they team up for one one episode. <laughs> 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 but that probably won't happen. <laughs> That's my fan fiction I'm going to write up later. Oh, there you go. There you are. <laughs> I like the idea that this is Dean killing time in heaven before Sam gets there because, you know, he's got the Samulet in the car. Um, I, I can see him not just driving, but deciding to do this. And someone said, well, John and Mary are in heaven. Why doesn't he just drive over to mom and dad's house and ask? And I said, has anybody ever asked their parents hard questions <laughs> out themselves and gotten an honest answer like ever? No, even if he drives over and has dinner, they're not 
going to actually tell him the truth. So I, that, that's persuasive. Now, the more out there theory could be that this is the John Winchester, the John and Mary of the Rich Chesters, you know, the don't touch my man bun guys before oh, yeah. he started Hunter Court. <laughs> <laughs> Although so, if you try to meld those two ideas, it's like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and maybe maybe Sam's unconscious, you know, alternate uh, Hunter Core Sam is, is sort of channeling Carlos in his hair. I don't know. But uh, <laughs> another, if we're going to think, well, maybe it's it's alternative universe Mary. Maybe it's Hunter Core John. And uh, we, have, we have a lot of really delicious possibilities. And that's one of the things I love about this series. So... Um, where do you think we're going to go from here with the Akrita? And um, how do you, well, let's, let's ask that. Where do you think this is going to go? Of course, you know, we'll be rendered wrong fairly soon. But <laughs> what do you think is going to happen next? And assuming that, that we do get a second season, where do you think it'll go from here, Carol? I kind of hope that they, that they do take care of that problem you know, in this first season. Um, now, and that the problem with that is that they may have been kind of counting on that back nine episodes and then found out they didn't get them. So they may not, they may not, <clears throat> excuse me, may not be able to resolve everything. But I think that, you know, the mothership, well, I guess we're calling it that all the time, uh, you know, did a pretty good job of, even though there were always some ongoing, uh, you know, arcs, it was like they were pretty good about taking care of a story arc within uh, one season, at least when it came to the antagonists, you know, that that was when it was your main villain, that part got, got answered. Well, of course, what happens when you're dealing with the supernatural uh, on Supernatural or on anything else is that once you take care of one problem, it doesn't mean something else is going to pop up later. And we see that happen all the time. So, uh, you know, on any type of show that ha has these situations, it happens in in books as well. So, you know, I, I would like to see them resolve it. Uh, you know, for the most part, I'm, I'm eager to see what comes next, but I just got to tell you, I am ready for those ugly looking things to be gone. Those are some <laughs> nasty, nasty pieces of work. And although I, I will say that the first one, the first time we saw one, when we saw just kind of the shadow, I was like, oh no, do not be what I think you're going to be. And okay, it wasn't, but it was, you know, close enough but yeah i hope they're i hope they're gone yeah okay <laughs> um i think i too would like to see the accreta uh taken care of in one season um because it seems like a lot of shows are doing the this is the big bad but we're not going to get rid of them for two or three seasons now and so it just keeps going it's like it's an ongoing when are they going to get to the end type of thing? Uh, yeah. Need to get rid of the Akrita anyway. <laughs> Just okay. looking forward to where they. In the next, if they get another season, um, because I'm there for it. Any... Maybe this is Supernatural's revenge by giving us another episode of Bugs. That could be, yeah. That That's the greatest be. episode, right? Yeah. So, Carol, your favorite. Oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Janet, how about you? I think that they were going to end this season with the Akrita just blowing things wide open on the supernatural front, and maybe where is Mary's mom plays into this, and what happened to her sister. And like you said, things are going to get ugly. They're going to get gritty. And I think this will be what precipitates that. And I hope it does not happen, but I could see it temporarily splitting up the gang too. Mm -hmm. All right. Electra? Um, I think that we're all getting tired of the Akrita because they have found the solution 
and the only way that they can beat these guys is with a magic box that they didn't create. They didn't do anything about, and it it seems like you know a Deus ex machina for them mm. and for us. We're tired of it, you know. You wave around the magic box, it, it it sucks them up. It's not all that great for all of us. It it's way more exciting to watch them figure out, right, this one has to be stabbed in the heart and this one needs to have its head cut off. Um, so I really want to see these guys gone. I'm I'm hoping for a, a second season where maybe we start to see the beginnings of some more relationships maybe the beginnings of the rape relationships behind the tavern and um maybe we see a young bobby well if jim beaver holds true to form he will show up looking exactly like jim beaver in every other show jim beaver has been <laughs> yeah, that's, that's true, true. <laughs> that's right. true looks different from jim beaver so it works for me. I would love to see Jim Beaver do, do something. Maybe he could play, you know, Bobby's dad. Yeah, that would be good. Uh, so. Or his uncle or something. Yeah, okay, definitely. Next season, Jim Beaver. That's my wish. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah I actually think that they're going to have to start leaning into things that tie into the... Um, into the supernatural franchise as they um, wrap this up or as they wrap the season up um, in order to make sure that they get a second season. That is my thought on it, um, which means that I think that we probably are going to see something like a young Bobby or um, honestly, I think that we might have Mary's parents being involved here at this point because I think that they're going to have to do something, pull something like that out of the hat to make sure that they don't lose the backing of people from the um, previous show's fandom because they're gonna need all of that to pull, make sure that they continue to be renewed. That's my thought. Um, and if they have somebody that's related to um, the Winchesters that looks like Jared Padalecki or whatever, I don't think that that's anything that I would hate. Um, but yeah, I, I do think we might be seeing Bobby soon, honestly. Yeah. Okay. Marks? Yeah, I hope, like Carol said, I hope they don't end on a cliffhanger or something because they thought they're going to get the second half. Because um, if it's a cliffhanger, probably like the queen will open up a doorway of invasion and someone will have to sacrifice themselves or something. <laughs> and then the next season they'll have to, they'll have to bring back whoever that is to life or something. Who knows? But uh, <laughs> um, it happened. It could yeah. happen. It could happen. Um, but I, I love the idea of, of a young Bobby. I would love to see some uh, young people. Uh, it's Ellen, right? Ellen and Joe. Yeah. So Ellen, a young Ellen would be cool. Um, you know, some of those hunters popping up, even that father, whatever, who died in Jim. one appearance in season one, Father Jim, <laughs> they can meet him. Um, you know, we'll be like, oh, man, so sad. He's We know he dies in, <laughs> in season one. <laughs> um, but uh, it would be cool to see some of those. And plus, we have so many characters or creatures and stuff that uh, that are immortal that could pop up. You know, there's nothing to say that or Wayna doesn't cross paths with them one time or 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 Crowley or something else. Um and I think that would be, yeah, I think that that would be it would excite fans quite a bit and it and it makes perfect sense for it to happen. So that's right, because Mark Shepard finished up his gig with with uh Winchester Independent with Walker Independence. So you know he's a free agent <laughs> to get him over here. Yeah. Um yeah, I'd love to see them run into like a young Missouri Mosley. Ada's kind of in that role, but she's not Missouri. Um, or, you know, in fan fiction, guys like Pastor Jim and Caleb and Daniel Elkin loom so large in fan fiction that you forget they barely had any screen time at all at the actual show. <laughs> um, but I'm wondering if in sending the Akrita packing, they don't somehow thin the veil between the mortal realm and everything else that makes it easier for all these interactions with heaven and hell and the angels and the demons and all that to mm. come through. Because right now that doesn't seem to be the norm. Um, 
and yet it certainly gets there quickly in the mothership. So I, I wonder if this sort of blows a, a hole in the fabric and um, sets things up for that. But I guess we'll, we'll watch and find out. Yeah, um, and I think that if it is actually one of these um, alternate universes that they had, um, you know, at the end of the other season with the alternate Mary, um, it could just turn into one of these hot mess um <laughs> hot mess alternate there were so many like just hot mess alternate realities and if this is something that has something with like tra travel through alternate dimensions that would be a whole new thing it's true we have not yet seen the the universe of chucks that only had squirrels in it so there's that <laughs> oh that's right yeah something to look yeah. forward to do yeah. they all talk because that'd be awesome <laughs> Well, we don't know. well, folks, we have our Dean talk in, doing the narrating because he mm -hmm. does say this is the story of his parents. Yeah. And so, the yeah. Apocalypse World Mary never <laughs> married John. She lost him early because she didn't make the demon deal. Yeah. 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 That would be interesting. So, I'm just imagining a, a Sam Dean. Dressed up, their squirrels now talking squirrels, <laughs> Sunday monsters. Okay, yeah, but we'd probably be willing to watch that. <laughs> yeah, well, that's what Crowley well, used to call a uh, Dean anyway. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. squirrel. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. Electric just gives us more more reason to believe it might be the Rich Chester's parents. You know, <laughs> I I want to see what I want to see where that goes. Yeah. All right, folks. We have blown through our time, so let's go quickly around. Let people know where they can find you online, Carol. Yes, uh, the uh, Urban Fantasy Track uh, Facebook page is active pretty much year round. Uh, times like you know, right now, it's not quite as robust as it is other times uh but that's the best place to find out news about the track and what we're doing you go to facebook and just put in dragon con urban fantasy that's what comes up we do also have lots going on on youtube uh on our youtube channel which again if you just go put in dragon con urban fantasy it will come up and uh, I, I do author interviews because we are a hybrid track. I do cover books and media. And uh, so I we, we actually did with Gail's help and Marx's help, both of whom were on every single uh, episode of, of what I called Supernatural Rewind. We went through and did a separate season every month and we did it for not 15 months in a row. We had to take a break because of little thing called dragon con but all of that <laughs> all all of those are on there as well so uh, i hope the people will still check them out very good sue uh you can find the dragon con sci-fi literature track page on facebook if you look on if you search for that it'll come up i have a personal page sue phillips uh, also on facebook and uh, you can find out what's going on with the uh, track there. As Carol said, we're kind of, you know, at a slow period right now, but it'll pick back up. It always does. Weeks. Yep. 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 Janet? Um, you can find me everywhere as Janet Walden West. And I'm easing a little bit away from Twitter. So, and a little more into TikTok, just in case, you know, Twitter explodes one day. <laughs> But you can the Akrita have gotten there. I'm sorry. It explained a lot. It explained yeah, a lot. It, it would. would. It really would. Electra. The Akrita makes more sense than anything else. I'm, I'm with Yeah, that. that's right. Yeah. Yeah. I'm Electra Hammond. You can find everything about me at untilmidnight.com. And I'm posting on Mastodon as Electra. Okay. Sumiko. Um, so my website is uh, sumikosalson.com, and you can also find me on um, almost every social media at uh, Sumiko SKA, um, except for Instagram where it's Sumiko Salson. So yeah, that's pretty much it. And this is Marla. Hi, Marla. <laughs> you can find Marla on my shoulder. <laughs> that's where she usually is. Okay. Yeah, usually. Uh, how about you, Marks? 
Uh, my main hub is markspile.com. Um, you can also find the anthologies that I publish and co-edit at, at cabotcrossing.com. Also at Twitter, as long as it exists, Mr. Marks. <laughs> and uh, and also by my name at, at uh, Facebook, Instagram. Uh, I just I'm trying out Mastodon too. So, and now I picture, you know, when they say that, you know, queen and they were like, the, the queen's off screen, we pan over and it's Elon Musk's reveal. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm pretty easy to find at galesymartin.com, morganbrice.com. If you spell them right, you'll find me on all the social media platforms. I run the Supernatural uh, TFWNC group here on Facebook, and I'm a columnist for the Winchester Family Business blog. But most of the time, you can find me here on Continual. So thank you all so much for a wonderful conversation. And thanks to all of you for watching and listening. There will be more Supernatural coming up. So we'll see you online.